a sensation many endurance athletes experience. Runner's high is a state of euphoria that wipes away fatigue and gives runners the feeling they can keep pounding the road forever. Endorphins, the body's own painkillers, are believed to be responsible for the phenomenon. Scientists at Bonn University are trying to better understand it with the help of medical imaging technology. Previously, it wasn't possible to produce any direct evidence for it, especially in which areas of the brain it occurs. That was mainly due to technical reasons. You can't simply look inside the brain of a marathon runner. But with modern imaging methods, that's now possible. We were interested in locating where the body's natural opiates are released in the brain after a lengthy period of physical stress. They found that a runner's high stimulates the same areas of the brain that process pain. It was a surprising insight for the team of neuroscientists. It seems sport has a far more specific effect on the brain than previously thought. But can physical activity affect other neurological functions? Scientists in Bonn teamed up with the German Sports University in Cologne to find out. They recruited a group of out-of-shape men over 40 to take part in a long-term study. Men like Wolfgang Breitbach. For years, the 55-year-old computer specialist hadn't exercised at all. Now he's getting fit for the half marathon. The project will test if the brain can also be trained, just like the cardiovascular system. Sports scientist Helge Knigge is monitoring 30 subjects throughout the six-month program. He gathers data from performance tests to gauge the men's overall level of fitness. And off we go. Start off slow to the first cone and please remain on the inside lane. If a single marathon can leave its mark on the brain, the researchers are expecting an even bigger effect after a six-month training period. The program follows established standards in sports medicine, but goes much further than simple measurements of heart rate and blood sugar levels. The team in Cologne is hoping to redefine our understanding of sport and health. We'd like to expand our findings into a more holistic approach to health, to go beyond physical health, to include mental and social health, and the brain is central to that. Wolfgang Breitbach's progress is recorded with brain scans. Even though the project is still underway, the research team already has firm expectations. They're hoping to detect a level of cell growth, which until now was only thought to occur with infants. They also expect improvements in memory and association functions. Test subjects are required to answer a series of questions with the push of a button. Thousands of scans are taken over the course of the program, producing a mountain of data for analysis. We can examine the flow of blood in the context of endurance sport. We can examine the metabolism of the brain. And we can examine the influence sport has on the processing of specific tasks. For example, what influence does prior physical exertion have on our concentration or learning processes? It could be some time before the relationship between sport and the brain is fully understood. But for the researchers in Bonn and Cologne, one thing is already clear. Time spent on the track isn't just good for the body, it's also good for the brain.